So this app renders every second and displays the renders as well as the seconds. But when I type and the app re-renders as well, I'm counting the re-renders and not losing the value when the component re-renders. How's it doing that? Hello and welcome. Hi, I'm Dave. Today we're going to look at the React hook use ref and how it differs from use state and also how to use ref to build a stopwatch timer like you saw at the beginning of this video. So let's get started. Now I've got Visual Studio Code here on the left and on the right I've got a simple React app running with a text input and of course that text input is down here in the JSX we can see right now inside of Visual Studio Code and it calls handle change when there is a change in the input and that sets the random input using use state. And we can see the handle change function right here and right now it only has set random input in there. Now instead of putting it in an anonymous function here inside of the JSX, I put it in a handle change function up here above the return and that's because we're going to add just a little more to this. Now first with use ref, it's important to know that you can create a reference. So let's import use ref and now let's go ahead and define a reference and let's call our reference renders. And we'll set this equal to use ref and we can set a beginning value if we want to and we'll set that equal to zero. And now there's two important rules to remember about use ref and one is the value persists. That means it stays the same between renders. And then the second rule is updating the reference does not trigger a re-render and that is the huge difference between use ref and use state because when we update state it triggers a re-render of our component but when we update the ref it does not trigger a re-render and that allows us to do something with, with use ref that we cannot do with state and that is to count how many times our component renders. So let's go ahead and access that reference renders inside our handle change function and now we need the current property. That's where we get the value of the ref. And now we're just going to increment it. And just by doing that we're going to be able to count every time this function is called. And of course we know every time this function is called the uh, functional component here is going to re-render because we're updating the state. So this will allow us to count the renders. Now let's go ahead and display this on the page instead of using the console. So down here we can go ahead and add to our JSX and I'm just going to put a paragraph that says renders with a colon and now inside that we're going to put that value renders.current and we'll close out the paragraph and save and we essentially have a render count now on our page instead of in our console that we might have done before with a console log saying component rendered or something like that. Now every time I type a letter or delete a letter, we're counting how many times our functional component renders. And so any change to our state re-renders the component and we're able to count that with use ref. So that really displays what use ref is capable of, but we can do some other very nice things with use ref as well. A classic example of something else we can do with use ref is to access something inside of the application that we want, like to set focus on an element. So let's go ahead and look at an example of that. I'm just going to define input ref because we can have more than one use ref per component. Now I don't need to set a value for this. It will automatically assign it an identifier and that's really what we need here because now we're going to come down into our JSX and apply one more attribute and that's the ref attribute. And now we can just put input ref in here so we know we're referencing that input ref. Now let's create a function that will allow us to click a button and set the focus back to the input. So doing this I'm going to say focus on input and then we can build the body of the function and all we really need to do is take that input ref that we have and of course remember we need the current property and then say focus. So now we can call this with a button inside of our JSX. I'll save this much. Now let's scroll down and add the button. I'm going to put the button above the input here. Let's copy these uh, line breaks and put it in between. So I'll say button 
And now let's give this an on click. And in the on click, we'll just say focus on input. There it is. And let's just say focus inside the button here. And now we can save. And now if we're not focused on the input, if we click our big button, we now have focus in the input. And I can type and render, click away, refocus. And so that kind of allows us access to the DOM like we would in vanilla JavaScript. Now the scary thing about this is once you realize what useRef does, it can let you skirt the rules of React. And if beginners learn about this, and this is what I'm warning you of, if beginners learn that they can access DOM elements with useRef, they'll start using vanilla JavaScript. And that is not what you want to do. You want to do things in a Reactful way in React because if you start grabbing the value of an input with useRef, for example, that is bad. You want to, of course, work with the state as we've learned to in React. If you start grabbing that and then get out of sync with your state, just as one example, that can have bad repercussions throughout your application. So continue to do things in a Reactful way and only use useRef to create a reference to something in your component when you really need to access it that way and setting the focus is a prime example of one reason you would do that. Okay, let's build a stopwatch timer like you saw at the beginning of this video. Now we're just going to change this functional component into that with a few small changes. So let's get rid of this input ref for now, but we're going to need to add a different ref. So let's say const timer ID, set this equal to use ref, and we won't need a value inside of that either. Let's keep our handle change function just as it is so we can once again count renders and render the page and show changes there. So that is fine. We won't need the focus on input function anymore, but we will need a start timer function. And now inside the start timer, we need that timer ID and of course the current property. And let's set this equal to set interval, which is something you can use in vanilla JavaScript as well. We are setting an interval and it has a function inside of it and we need to set what the interval is as well and this needs to be one second. Because it's a timer we're just going to count the seconds. Now inside this we need to once again count the renders because this is going to set state here as well. So we need some state for our seconds. So up above. I'm going to press Shift, Alt, and the down arrow. I'm using Windows here in Visual Studio Code just to copy that line of state. And now I'm going to set this to seconds and set seconds. And so now we have the time that we will use. We're going to count seconds and then we'll use set seconds here. And we'll go ahead and set seconds with that function that you can pass in to use state. So we're taking the previous state and we're setting it to previous plus one. And so that will go ahead and increment the seconds in state along with the timer. Now we're counting the renders here just like we do in the handle change. And that is because this is going to re-render every time we set the state. So every second we get a re-render of the functional component. Now, of course, we can't just start the timer, so let's also create a stop timer function. And this is where persisting that value for the timer ID is very handy because once we start the interval here with the set interval, it assigns the ID to this current property, and then we need that to, of course, clear the interval when it comes time to do that whenever we want to. So what we're going to do is use clear interval and inside clear interval we pass timer ID dot current. After that we want to go ahead and do one more thing and that is set the timer ID dot current equal to zero because clearing the interval doesn't set the timer ID to zero but we need to just do that manually here. Now there's one more function I want to create and this would be for a third button and this is a reset timer. So let's choose reset or type reset timer. 
Now inside this function, the first thing we're going to do is choose stop timer. We're going to call stop timer into action if we click reset timer. And after that, we want to say if there is a value in seconds, if it's not already zero, in other words, then we're going to go ahead and count renders again or update renders because we're going to set the state once again. And here we're going to set the seconds to zero inside of our state so it resets the timer. Oh, and I just saved the file and got an error over here because I haven't changed our JSX yet. So let's scroll down and update our JSX to use the functions that I just created. Okay, so we no longer need this ref on the input. We could, of course, leave it there if we wanted to and keep the focus button, but I'm not going to. And then after that, we're going to keep counting the renders. And underneath that, we need to change our button and we're actually going to add a couple of buttons. So this button is not going to be focused on input anymore. It's going to start the timer. And so let's just put the word start right here. And now let's go ahead and wrap these buttons as well in their own section element. So I'll put that underneath. And now we can copy down this button two more times. And this will be stop timer. And the third one would be reset timer. Change this word to stop and change the last word to reset. And finally, let's copy one more line of these line breaks down. And in between the line breaks, let's go ahead and put the seconds on the page or on the screen. So we'll have seconds, and then we'll just put the value of the seconds here that we're keeping in state as well. So let's save that. Everything looks like it should right now. Well, I think maybe I'd like to see a zero there for seconds. So let's scroll back up and see, yes, we just have an empty string for seconds. So let's start it with a zero when we initiate our use state here. Okay, everything looks good. Let's type in here. We're getting the output here. Renders are counting here. And if we reset, it doesn't reset the renders. So let's go ahead and start the timer. And now we're getting one second, two second, and the renders are incrementing as we go. We can stop the timer and we go ahead and continue to keep the value of the renders that we're using a ref for. And we can start the timer again. And we're keeping the value of the seconds in state once we stop and start, and that's fine. Or we can reset and we get zero seconds. We keep our renders as well. So everything in our timer is working. And what's more, the timer can be running. And then we can count more renders as I delete letters in the input or type letters again. So everything is working as we expect it to. And that is something cool you can do with use ref. We're using the reference to hold that timer ID value. And remember to always use the current property when you're accessing the value of a reference. So I hope you understand more about use ref and how cool it is to use sometimes. But also remember, do not abuse it. Don't go back to your vanilla JavaScript ways in React. Continue to think in a Reactful way and just use ref when you specifically need to. Remember to keep striving for progress over perfection, and a little progress every day will go a very long way. Please give this video a like if it's helped you, and thank you for watching and subscribing. You're helping my channel grow. Have a great day, and let's write more code together very soon.